so the My Hair Academia community has been on fire again. Um, it has been on fire again based on this most recent manga chapter that came out today. Now, I read the unofficial translations and then, you know, I do my review of the official translations and, uh, yeah, um, man, this is, a to say it's a very dis- divisive, uh, topic or point in the story, you have some fans thinking, or, well, you not thinking, you have some fans who feel like this move, this decision that they're doing at the end of the chapter, which, if you read the chapter, the whole thing about Bakugo coming back to life, um, is a bad thing. Um, and then you have some other people who are fine with it, and they're kind of like, let's see how this plays out and let's see how this looks i don't really think it's fun i don't really think it's a problem it's something out of left field it's something different something i didn't see coming um but you know it, it, it's created a whole controversy of topics some of the most prominent youtubers um who talk about my hero academia you know have pretty much not decided to like this decision um i've only seen one person where if anything says well you know let's see how this plays out um but you know my thing my my whole stance with this whole situation because i want to get this out eh, you know my whole stance well my whole stance on the situation of bakugo coming back to life due to edge shot um I'm kind of in the realm of, look, I'm being honest. I don't like it. I don't like it. It makes, to me, it makes no sense. Yes, it's completely out of left field, but it makes no sense out of left field. Um, And we never knew Edshot could freaking repair freaking organs, pretty much. But I want to save my whole ending discussion at the end of the video. Um... So we can get through, like, at least some of the actually good parts of this chapter. I would say this chapter, My Hargadamia chapter 364, is actually a really good chapter. I think the thing that takes it down, especially for a lot of people, is the fact that um, Edshot is going to sacrifice himself and, guess what, Um, bring Bakugo back to life. Um... Like I said, it doesn't make it a great chapter. Um, I would say it makes it a really good chapter. Um, That story point, I guess you would say, holds this chapter back. But let's get to the chapter. Let's get to the chapter. Now, the chapter starts off with dialogue containing, you know, the um, quirk erasing bullet. Um, And it's confirmed that it's the same quirk erasing bullet that overhauled pretty much took... Uh, from Aries blood um, and because of it um, Dr. Ujiko pretty much you know it he pretty much th- this whole notion of what's happening with these quirk racing bullets it pretty much proved Dr. Ujiko's whole you know theory on the quirk doomsday theory and the fact that he pretty much was hitting it on the head hitting the nail on the head of the fact that as the generations progress quirks will tend to get stronger and when they do well then things will start to get out of control uh, now he's doing he's giving this to all for one and he pretty much says listen you only get a one and done here so you only get one shot and then that's kind of it he goes on to say assuming things are according to plan you'll get to walk free again i'm betting it will help make your dream come true um so then we get so continuing this flashback um you know the flashback continues to say and just because i'm not around when you get out of the big house i'm leaving it all in the safe house along with the data pretty much telling all for one here's the safe house i made for you um this is where you can find all this data and information and things like that um so yeah um and this portion of the flashback ends off with all for one pretty much saying and if i are Dr. Ujiko saying, and if I had one wish, I ask that your own heart be filled with hate. And we see how pretty much when um, All for One got out of Tartos, he found this place, 
He found everything Dr. Ujiko set up for him so he could be prepared. So we cut back to the present. And yes, we see all for one. Pretty much his body is rewinding back to his prime stage. Um, and he's pretty much kind of pretty much praising Endeavor. He's like, look, Endeavor, you did something I never even thought you could do. You actually got me to use my backup plan. Um, or I guess my secret plan um, in a way. Um, so, yeah. Now, they all, everybody pretty much sees that All for One is pretty much rehealing himself. Um, and Tokoyami actually realizes wait a second, that's the same abilities that Eri has. Um, so, yeah, now, um, the thing is, All for One, he flies down pretty much. Um, now, Hawks is kind of chasing after him at full speed, or whatever, or whatever speed he's got left. Um, now, All for One pretty much goes on to make the mention that his body feels pretty much super light. Um, and he's flying down to the other, to where the battles are taking place. And all of a sudden, he gets, he falls down, creates this huge dust cloud, gets behind this one pro hero that's fighting, I believe. And he, we see how he pretty much takes the quirk, like, takes this hero's quirk within an instant. Um, and pretty much also at the same time took the cape because he was butt-ass naked, pretty much. Um, so yeah. Oh, and also he does make a mention, I guess he's very muscular, very buff. We can tell that. Anyways, Hawks comes in, saves the girl. Um, pretty much all for one goes and say, this a bit of rewinding will be the end of me. Ultimately, I'm doomed to vanish now. So we get a big confirmation. And it was kind of back when I saw this happen. I was like, how are they going to defeat Prime all for one, bro? Unless you ask Aerie to rewind all, uh, all Might and he actually has his one for all abilities and he's back in his Prime, there's no way Prime all for one can be stopped alongside Shigaraki. Um... So we find out this chapter that no, his rewinding will continue to rewind. He will rewind back to probably just nothingness, which is what Ares' power would um, do before. I guess you could say she seemingly controlled it better. Um, when she touched you, she would just rewind you back to pretty much. Um, she, she would pretty much she would pretty much rewind you back to um, nothing. You know, as if you never you never existed. So we find out in this chapter that All for One is pretty much, I guess you can say, on a time limit right now with how much damage he can do to the heroes. Um, and it's those whole thing of he's rewinding till pretty much he's at a weakened state. Um, I would envision the the younger he gets, the weaker he gets. So that means you can practically probably kill him with utter ease. Um, now. All for one goes on to say, but my dream will live on as I pass the baton to Tomura Shigaraki. Now, the reason why we already know he says that is because, well, the his living embodiment of himself um, is already within Tomura Shigaraki, and he's doing his best to try to take control of um, Shigaraki's body, so then he can just continue to live on. Um, now, all for one goes on to say, the only task left to me is to rescue him from your brazen trap. So if you don't mind, now the thing is, he's actually trying to leave. He's trying to get up out of there. He's like, okay, I gotta meet up with Tomura Shigaraki. Maybe potentially, in a way, trying to have him understand this, uh, the, the, in a way, try to have him understand this, uh, or maybe steal uh, the rewind portion of the quirk. So then guess what? Shigaraki can have it. And like I said, Shigaraki's already OP as shit all right now in the story. And if you were to get freaking um, rewind, it's done. It's over. It's it, it's literally over because Shigaraki could just rewind his body every time he gets badly damaged. Um, so, yeah. Now, Hawks gets down there. Um, and he's just like, all for one, had a very huge power up. I just need Endeavor to get one shot on this guy. One very powerful shot on this guy, and we can beat this guy. Now, Hawks goes on to tell um, All for One, your dream, something beyond stealing one for all, 
mind filling me in for a future reference and pretty much all for one, one yeah all for one responds by saying it's simple i'm quite influenced by comets the world always feared the big bad villain why do you think that is um and hawks office replies like uh because he does bad stuff because villains do bad stuff and all for one's like what bad stuff are you talking about then um he goes on to say in a world teeming with um, a myriad of cultures and values bad stuff would be an act that universally makes the masses turn up their noses in disgust an act which thwarts the future they envision so i intend to thwart the future of the whole world that's all i ever wish for pretty much he uh, it's kind of this thing how he wants to turn the world um in like i said it, he wants to rule over everything but he wants to turn the world on himself and we kind of see this um in the next panel when we co cut over to the united states point of perspective but it's kind of the whole thing of having these countries like oh should we fucking just take advice from these guys should we um and that's what leads into the next portion of the chapter and we cut over to the um united states in washington dc and pretty much um the and i guess you'd say there's like protests going on um and things like that so um it's absolutely crazy um things are going on so this guy named timothy agpar um is being confronted i believe by the president and he's pretty much saying um how would we reign in this crisis unlike most others our nation has already taken a half a step into the red zone um and uh, pretty much the thing is according to the re report from the quirk research agencies tomar is already beyond anything humanity can stop which absolutely makes sense because their own hero their own best hero star and stripe couldn't stop him um and that's the thing um and there's this whole um battle of saying you know this agpar guy this timothy agpar guy he pretty much makes a mention he's trying to tell this the president like are you trying to say we should side with the villains and the president pretty much responds by saying there's already a stand-up between the world's um developed nations as we wonder who will be the first to earn tomara's trust and pretty much timothy um Ag our agpar is pretty much saying thinking about how we should let him rule over us that's insanity um and the president um is pretty much saying um like no it's no it's not that we're only doing this to minimize casualties um we gotta get a little bit of understanding before him before we make a final just strike on this guy find out this guy's weakness pretty much um and pretty much Arapo replies by saying please you know that's not going to work because if we give in this dude an inch of like leeway he's just gonna have he's just gonna do whatever he wants and guess what we're gonna be submissive to him um and obviously the president's like this is for our nation's goal our future bless me um but Agpar pretty much responds by saying you know we won't have a future if we let this happen um and pretty much this whole thing this whole stance this guy is taking is saying listen if we let shigaraki rule over us it's done it's over he comes into, the, into our country's borders he pretty much says listen you either listen to me now or you're done well it's over because there will be nothing we can do to um defeat him because he'll have access to everything we'll ever have now Agpar goes on to say, your position's forcing you to take this stance, yes. Um, and the thing is, Agpar says, do you know what Star really was fighting for? Why do you think Cassie followed her idol's footsteps and died for it? I'm sure you really haven't forgotten. Uh, yeah, forgotten. He goes on to say, children observes, uh, observes, ob observe how adults um, grow. And adults in turn support the children as they pass it forward and so on to the next generation pretty much again real life situation the fact how you know i guess if you want to compare to you living in your parents with your parents 
you know your parents when you as you the years you grow older and even the teachers when you go to school they try to instill all this knowledge show you to do the right things and stuff like that and teach you all these things so then you're instilled with all this knowledge um so they pass that knowledge to you which then in turn when you end up becoming an adult you can then pass it on to the next generation you know it's a simple thing it's how life has gone been gone has gone on for literally since the beginning of time um and Agpar says heroes have always wielded their power in the name of that cause and that's when we get to this very uh divisive chapter now Edshot, who is very much beat up pretty much comes on comes up to where best genius is near Bakugo's dead body and he goes on to say yes i'm the ninja hero there's no realm i cannot infiltrate and i have ample experience invading the bodies of others um he goes on to say now let's just say um best genius is pretty much against this idea of doing this but ed shot is pretty much you know cool with it he's fine with it and ed shot is just like i gotta fight i gotta continue to fight and this is my way of continuing to fight um now he screams out now he ed shot screams on america saying don't go quietly um should you um should he tear you asunder sink your teeth into his flesh and Sugar Rocky's like, oh god, this is just pointless BS right here. Um, and Edshot goes on to say, because Edshot, the hero, will not let this pass. The this stopped heart belongs to a life that we can ill afford to lose. Um, I'm not too late. I shall replace what's missing and make it pump. Now, um, Best Genius, like he uses Edshot's real name kamihara he goes and say dude you know if you do this there's no coming back from this you'll die and pretty much ed shot is like i know but just so i leave the rest to you and the other heroes to stop this guy um and we get a quick little flashback of ed shot and best genus back when i get they were in school i um, mean everything and we found out that um what is it? They were in a club together, and Best Genius was the president. And the chapter ends off with Edshot doing this move called Ninpo Thousand Sheet Pure Zenith. I will be that boy's heart, pretty much saying that he will be Bakugo's new heart. So, what? 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 Okay, so you got my first half. Okay, so my first half thoughts, I thought all that shit was cool. I thought it was cool how all for one pretty much says he wants to pretty much flip all the nations you know uh upside down to where they just take orders from him and it was also pretty cool to find out that guess what his erasing thing is not a thing where he's mastered no he's legit he's legitimately rewinding back to pretty much nothingness so he's on a time limit so endeavor and the other endeavor hawks and other heroes there have to keep um him there because he's trying to go read shigaraki um, I like the whole thing when they cover the United States of America, um, and it's very interesting that they had the country of the United States of America talking about a very ta decisive topic like that of like, should we join our enemies or should should we join the enemy side with them um, for, you know, peace and freedom and everything, which is a so America, so, so American thing to do um as of late with this whole thing of just standing idly by and absolutely doing nothing but personally if you ask me well what's currently going on in the world i think standing idly by right now for the time being unless anything crazy freaking goes on i um, in this world is fine enough as long as you know there's peace but you know this whole thing of trusting the villains having the villains just come up into your country take over and you'll just say oh you you will 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 we'll fool them um to think that we're so open and then when we find the right moment we find something to defeat them with a weakness and someone will we'll give them the back in reality villains will be way smarter than that um and they'll see that coming a mile away and that's what um timothy agpar was telling um the president like dude you're just doing this to potentially keep your freaking probably you have a good re-election campaign in, in in any way so you know that was the thing and it's just I'm just like, okay, cool, cool, cool. Um, interesting, interesting, interesting. 
Now this last part, this last part, because I wanted to talk about this last part in depth as best I can. I've already said I do not like this decision that they don't, that they're bringing him back. I think Horikoshi made probably a very bad decision. One of the worst decisions he could have made in this series run. Um, because if you go back to the chapter where Bakugo died, it was something that a lot of my Hero Academia fans were very shocked he actually did. People were shocked, myself included. Like, the video, the caption of that video, the title of that video was like, I can't believe Horikoshi actually did it. Um, or actually did this. I said that because I was absolutely shocked that he actually would 100% go through with killing Bakugo. And if you go watch that same video at the end, I said, like, listen, Horikoshi could potentially try to bring Bakugo back. As long as, as it's logical and makes sense, um, and I guess it's something different, which in this case it is different, but to me it doesn't feel logical or make sense because they never built Ed Shot up to do something like this before. Um, it's just a waste of a... It, it, it's a false death. It's a false death. It's a fake death narrative. And it's just... An awful writing. It just goes to show you that this, this was just a bad writing decision. This was just a bad writing decision. Most importantly, you can go back to the chapter, the, the previous chapters. Maybe it's all you can also blame Horikoshi of. Well, guess what? You wrote yourself killing Bakugo off. You didn't have to do that. You could have just killed some other character off. You could have had Edshot die earlier. Our Miracle die earlier. Our best genus die, be the one to die. Or maybe one of the big three to end up dying. Whether it was because for the longest time, because back then, because when they focused on Tamaki Amajigi, I thought he was gonna be the character that's gonna probably more than likely get killed and lose his life. Um the way they were building him up. Um, I don't know why Horikoshi Horikoshi, he did instead of having Bakugo be the person to die, um, why not just choose another hero that was right there in the vicinity? Then guess what? You could have just left them dead and you could have still had Bakugo get this power up to where, guess what? He's still getting beat up by Shigaraki very badly. Um, but all of a sudden, Deku shows up in the nick of time. I'm just saving before he ends up getting killed. Um, you know, I don't know why. I think this was a bad writing decision by Horikoshi. He, in, in, in other words, it's like how I feel about Dragon Ball Super's manga. With Toriyama and Toritaro, when it came to Goku um, mastering Ultra Instinct or being able to transform into Silvered Hair Ultra Instinct at will. Because of it, they wrote themselves into a corner because now they're coming with different phrases of Ultra Instinct. Now, this current mode of Ultra Instinct Goku has is true Ultra Instinct. What? This is what Horikoshi did the same thing. By killing Bakugo off, he wrote himself into a corner with how he could beat bring him back to life let's be honest what are the only ways he could have brought bakugo back to life only one way Ari somehow shows up in the middle of the battlefield somehow which was never going to happen and guess what she were to re she would rewind him but guess what Ari's not here so that can't happen which means horikoshi wrote himself into a corner he put it himself into a corner. He wrote himself into a corner to where he couldn't bring Bakugo back to life unless it was through complete bullshittery out of the ass. And it's a writing decision that, guess what? It doesn't benefit the story. And I saw a comic say, comment saying, you know, a decision like this makes My Hero Academia going from a great to, like, legendary slash best of all time series to pretty much great to good it actually hurts it to where it's like no nah, it's a good series it was bad the only thing that took it down from great to bad good was this one decision uh the author made and he could if he just stayed to the core if he stayed to the course it would have been really good um and you know, that's the thing. I, I don't know why these manga authors, when it comes to these final arcs in their stories, they really go back and they really renege on things. I, You know, and then I really do hate these false deaths 
you know, if you watch Fairy Tale, you know the whole Master Makarov thing where he looked like he was going, and spoilers for Fairy Tale if you haven't seen it, but, you know, the guild master of Fairy Tale, who was in the series, the original series, the entire time to the final arc, which was a war arc, just like My Hero Academia, he does this move that pretty much would have killed him, and that's what it looks like it ends up doing. But at the end of the arc, after the arc is over, he ends up living. We find out, oh, he's still alive. He's just sitting in his wheelchair. Like, what? So now Edshot is bringing him back to life. So now Edshot is going to be his new heart. Is Edshot going to be conscious within Bakugo's new heart? It makes no sense. It makes no sense. You know, I'm not going to... You know, I'm not, I'm not going to go crazy over it, but my opinion, I think this was a bad writing decision by Horikoshi. Um, I, it, it just makes no sense. I, I, I can't really explain. You know, if Bakugo is a very popular character... You know, a very popular character. Why even go the direction of killing him off? You know, Bakugo is a fan favorite character. Why kill him off? What to appease the people that wanted to see Bakugo die for once? Um, and guess what? You don't even stay on it. I don't know what happened. Maybe you know. I don't. I don't know if you know the death of Bakugo in that one chapter got a lot of flack from the Japanese community. Because, like I said, ultimately, I, and I've said this before on the channel, ultimately, these manga are only advertised to the Japanese. We get, we see the manga, we read it, but let's be honest, our voices are not as strong as out there in the Japanese market. The Japanese have total say with what they want to, to, to um, consume and have. You know, you know, it doesn't matter what we say. We can come out all together here in the West be visibly outraged it's not going to change a thing because only horikoshi's edit you know the only thing horikoshi is you know catering to is his japanese audience and the people of shueisha so maybe his japanese audience you know didn't like the fact that why'd you kill baku go off and everything you know maybe his editors the people at shonen the, yeah the people at shueisha they were like why did you kill off one of our most popular characters that make us money why would you do that man and maybe they said find a way to freaking reverse this and maybe he was pressured to doing this maybe horiko and, and maybe that could be the thing we don't have the backstage details we don't maybe horikoshi wanted to keep bakugo dead but maybe the guys up top said no dude this guy bakugo makes us a lot of money why would you kill him off find some way to bring him back i don't care what it is and to us maybe it's bad to the japanese audience They'll take it and they'll accept. And typically, that's kind of the nature of the Japanese audience. They get what they get and they take it. They have no derivative derivative of, I don't really like this. It's kind of just like, okay, I'll take it. Which, it kind of sucks because that's what happens when you get these things from a different country. To us, maybe things don't be apparent. Like, for example, the whole thing about the villains. To us, to the United States of America, to the people in the West. We love the villain characters. We think they're very, um, they, we, we think they're very, um, they, they have a lot of development. They're very deep characters. And that's majority reason why we love those characters. Out there in Japan, they don't give a fuck about the villains. They And, and if anything, they hate the villains because a thing is, well, guess what? We don't like villains. And it's a taboo to even ha care about the villains. We're supposed to hate them. You know, that's just their common, that, that that's just their common views on things. You know, the manga for My Villain Academia didn't really do good in sales in Japan, because guess what? The Japanese public do not like the villains. It's a taboo to like characters who do bad things. You know, that's just their culture of things, how they operate over there. So there's really ultimately nothing we can do of a small voice. Like, you know, that's kind of the thing. Um, it does suck. It, it kind of makes you wish like these authors wish they'd come over here. They do their manga stuff and they just cater to the audience over here. Um, but that's kind of the thing. But that's just my thing. I don't know what's going on. I think Horikoshi is writing himself into a corner with this. Whether th if this was Horikoshi's flat out decision if, on his plan sheet, well, then that's not a good idea. But, you know, maybe there's a potential small chance maybe that 
you know, maybe these people who are upset with this decision, maybe need to look a little bit more into the situ situation. Maybe the Japanese public didn't like the fact that Bakugo was killed off. Maybe they showed outrage and that got under to Horikoshi um, and got under to Horikoshi other than the Horikoshi got cold feet. Or maybe most importantly, his higher up said, why'd you kill off the most important character that makes us all this money? I definitely could believe it was definitely the higher ups um, telling him. Um, now, I'm not defending this decision. I'm just saying it could have been the higher ups um, telling him, like, you need to find a way to bring Katsuki Bakugo back to life because we need this guy to make some more money. Um, and that's kind of the end of the goal in today's society. It's about who can make the most money. It's not about who can make the best story anymore. It's about who can make the most money. And if there's any ways to make money, well, then, you know, there's a way to make money. And if Bakugo was dead, well, guess what? There's no more ways you can make any more collections or, you know, you know, I guess models of him um, and stuff like that. But that's just my thoughts on this current My Hero Academia chapter. I thought it was fine for what it was. Um, the ending part of the chapter was really fucking bad. Um, if Horikoshi got cold feet, that's just, that's just, no, I can't. I can't. We'll see how the story plays out. Um... So we'll see. We'll see. Um, I, I, I don't know. I just don't know. It's not definitely not a good look. De it's definitely not a good look for Horikoshi. Um, I just hope the My Hero Academia community, because they're so bad um, with this, um, I really hope they don't show Horikoshi hate his way for one bad writing decision. Um, one bad really writing decision because my Hero Academia has one of the worst communities. There's like some genuinely good people in the community, but altogether the community is actually pretty much dog shit. Um, and I won't be shocked if they send Horikoshi tweets and hate said, why the fuck did you do this, dude? You should have just kept Bakugo dead. Don't, it, it, I would advise you, don't do that, please. This man's probably going through enough stress as is, and that's one of the main reasons why he's ending off this series, because he probably wasn't doesn't want to deal with this nonsense no more um so please do not send this guy hate his way for a bad writing decision we're just gonna have to deal with it if this is something that guess what you just it's too bad for you and you're just gonna drop it well then drop it and move on and go read something else if you're gonna continue to stick want and watch but not like it hey stick and watch stick or stick and read you don't have to like it um so yeah um it'll be very interesting it'll be very interesting where this goes but anyways guys i'm gonna get out of here if you guys like the video leave a like put in the comment section your thoughts on this uh manga chapters review as well as anything else i have uploaded to the channel till then guys peace